authorization for device access. Like in the previous sections, we have seen how to authenticate the users by using the local or the external database. Now, once the user gets authenticated, you may also want the user to be authorized. Like authorization is less like restricting a user to use any specific commands uh, after successful authentication. Like if you take an example, you may have some different group of engineers like level 1, level 2, level 3 engineers and you want the level 1 engineer, uh, the group of level 1 engineers should be assigned some basic commands like they can, they can only use some basic show commands, ping or trace commands, some basic troubleshooting but they cannot make any changes. So I want to make sure that these users in this specific group should not be able to make any changes and I want to restrict them to specific basic show commands. At the same time, I have a separate group of engineers who are level 2 engineers and I want them to do everything what the level 1 engineers can do. At the same time, they can make changes to the configurations, let's say the routing configurations, they can make changes to router EHR, P4, SPF or any specific routings but they cannot make any changes to other, other related things like VPNs or security stuff because we have a separate engineers to manage that and also they cannot erase any, any configurations. So likewise we have a level 3 engineers, they can do almost all the tasks uh, A to Z except some few tasks let's say or we have a security group of engineers, they, they their responsibility is to make changes to the VPNs, ACLs, they can modify some uh, policies but they cannot make any changes to the routing configurations let's say. So once the user gets authenticated it is, it is very important to make sure that they all they are also authorized so that we can give some, some level of access to those users. Like the WAN engineers, these are the permissions, security operator engineers, we, we want to give these permissions. So again, just like uh, authentication, we can either use a local database because once the user is going to type any command, it's going to compare because, because here what we'll do is we'll create a user and we'll assign something like privilege levels. We'll talk about more on this in the next videos. Now, when a user type in any specific command, it's going to verify what is the privilege level assigned to that and what are the commands associated to that privilege level. And based on that, the user will be only able to execute only the commands which are defined in that privilege level, which is associated to the user. And again, to do this, we can either use the local database. I can configure the router uh, and the privilege levels and define the commands. Everything we can do it locally. Or we can also do the same thing on the ACS servers, external, where we'll create a user accounts here and we'll assign the privilege levels here. And every time you type in the command, we can tell the router to go and contact the ACS servers whether this user can, can execute this command or not.